So Breaking Points did uh, something really interesting here. Griffin, their producer, decided, I'm going to go on the ground in New York. I'm going to ask people who voted for both AOC and Trump, why'd you do that? <laughs> Which, it, again, it's fascinating, right? It's fascinating to ask that question. It's fascinating to hear their answers. So uh, let's take a listen and we'll break it down as we go here. Why did you vote for both uh, Trump and AOC in 2024? Because America needs a role model. And I think Donald Trump is a role model. Trump is a role model? I mean, look, I don't want to be an asshole, but it strikes me that that is just genuinely a low-information voter. <laughs> you got to call a spade a spade. 91 criminal charges over uh, 20 accusations of uh, sexual abuse against him. Tried to overthrow the last election. Like... My guess is she's saying he's a role model because he's successful, right? Like, that's what's happening in her mind is, like, successful businessman. Like, I think that's what she's thinking, but wow. Holy shit. All right. I'm going to try to be nice in this segment because I want to actually learn some lessons and get some information. But, you know, I'm of two minds. On the one hand, it's like, if they're wrong about something, I have to say you're just wrong. But also... We got to get to the core of how it is that anybody could do, vote AOC and Trump. The border, you know, the people coming to U.S. illegally, the martyrs, everything, all the crimes are increasing. The Democrats really haven't done anything for us. That actually made the situation worse in New York. So I thought this time around, let's just give Trump, you know, a chance. Maybe, you know, he can make things better. He's very business minded. And I also feel that being that he had these connections with other leaders, it can like, you know, prevent war from happening in the future. All right. So I consider that the first like real answer. This woman thinks Trump is going to stop wars, which, you know, she's probably heard him say, I'm against the wars. On that, it's like I blame the media for not always saying, no, you're not. Here's your record. Here's all the wars you did do. Here's all the bombings you did do. Here's all the drone strikes. Uh, here's all the illegal assassinations like of Soleimani. So I kind of blame the media on that one. But that's our first real answer. Our first real answer is, I don't know, I think he's going to be against the wars. Which, again, there's a lesson in that for the Democrats and for Kamala. Like, you should have at least postured like you're anti-war. I mean, if they bragged about pulling out of Afghanistan, that would have been good. Bragged about nearly ending the drone war, that would have been good. If Kamala said, we're going to bring peace instead of, uh, we're going to have the most lethal military in the world, that would have been good, right? And I also feel that being that he had these connections with other leaders, it can, like, you know, prevent war from happening in the future. When Trump first came, those four years, it was, you know, ups and downs, but it was nowhere, like, you know, it was no war. Uh, again, I don't know who else to blame for this but the media for not correcting the record and giving Trump's laundry list of hawkish foreign policy things that he did I, it's like you have to blame the media for that because trump's gonna trump is gonna lie right he's always gonna lie but the media needed to be able to say you weren't anti-war but it you know the branding stuck if there's one thing you can say about trump he's a branding master how does aoc fit into that picture she's like that sister that will always defend you she'll fight she'll scream till a bloody pulp if she had to you know she's truly a fighter that's another thing i consider a real answer she's a fighter he's a fighter okay um, like a New York realness that they both share? Is that what I'm oh, hearing? Oh, yeah, definitely. So much that they could be like brother and sister almost. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, dog. Also, like, the idea that they're both fighters is true, but they're fighting for polar opposite things. I, look, a lot of this you gotta call spade a spade. It's just vibes. A lot of this is just vibes. It's vibes. And by the way, I don't know what it is. But... People are really thirsty for New Yorkers. It's true. I guess I should be thankful that I'm, I'm a New Yorker. Because something about the vibe of New Yorkers, the country's like, ooh, I like you. I like, <laughs> why? I don't know. I have no idea why. I like that they're very outspoken. They really have, I think, no filter. If you look at Joe Biden, there are a lot of things. Definitely no filter. That is true with both of them. I think AOC probably has a little bit more of a filter, but... I get it. That, again, is kind of a real answer. It's probably he wouldn't understand about our generation or the future generation. And also Donald Trump as well. He's aged two. So we need someone above and beyond, like, more new generation and would understand more. Okay, but Kamala is so much younger. You can't say, like, bro, we need really need somebody younger, bro, when you pick the older option by far on the ballot. 
again, we're back. We're back to vibes. We're back to vibes. I just voted for her, honestly, because the other people I didn't know about and her, I just always hear about. It's like crazy. So I thought, you know, she's a familiar name. Let me just vote for her. I mean, this really puts in perspective how silly the Democratic Party eggheads are who are like crunching 87,000 different data points to try to craft the exact right message to press all the right buttons to get the people to vote for you when like this is their answers, right? This this is what they're saying. Jesus. It was like, vote for her. So I was like, okay. <laughs> My mom was like, vote for her. So, okay. Uh, guys, what did I tell you? Remember the day after the election, I was like, let's not underestimate just how much Trump being a controversial, charismatic celebrity helped him here. Just the fact that he's probably one of the most, if not the most famous people walking the planet right now, that alone could have made, could have made all the difference. His charisma, his controversy, that he's in the news all day, every day, that stuff matters, right? The content doesn't even matter if they're shitting on him. It's just like, people are talking about him, right? That's, that's enough. Listen to your mom. <laughs> Could you compare Kamala and AOC for me? What is the difference between the two of them? I just feel that Kamala um, has a position as a vice president already, and I don't feel like she did much in the position that she held for the last four years. Well, what about Trump when he was in there for four years, right? What about that? I feel like she used entertainers for promotion, and I didn't like that at all. God, I, okay, that's validation of something I've said. I said on Pierce Morgan. I, mean, I was going back and forth with Harry Sisson and, 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 you know, he was defending like using Taylor Swift or Beyonce and stuff. And I was like, Harry, nobody cares about celebrity endorsements. People like celebrities for what they like them for. They like Beyonce for dancing and singing. They like Taylor Swift for singing. Like, that's why they like them. They don't really care about their thoughts on social security or the marginal tax rate. It makes no sense. Charles Barkley made the same point. He's like, why would I care? He was like, I love Cardi B. Why the fuck would I care who she votes for? Right? It's true. And I like Cardi B too. I actually think she's great. Um, she was a big Bernie supporter back in the day. But like the idea you just trot out to celebrities and that's that. I mean, look on the Republican side, it's like they have fucking like Ted Nugent and Kid Rock and Trump ended up winning. Is that because of the power of Ted Nugent and Kid Rock? No, those, that was irrelevant. I've always said if, 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 if I were to run for office, I would make a point of being like, I don't want any endorsements. I'm not interested in earning endorsements from celebrities or other politicians or the establishment. I'm against the establishment. I don't need their help. I don't want their help. I want to be as far away from them as possible. I don't know why people don't run and say that. I don't know why people don't run and say, I don't have any consultants. Nobody's helping me with strategy. I don't need a strategist to tell you what I think we should do with the country. I'll just tell you what I think we should do with the country. Like, all these, like, the, the Democrats are too lost in their consultant garbage. And that's such a great example that the celebrity thing put this woman off to Kamala. Democrats think, oh, yeah, this is big. It's going to gain us voters. What if it literally loses you voters? Right? Okay, here we go. She doesn't bring anything to the table. Even if she was a first woman president, she doesn't know what she's doing. And she's going to, you know, not give us a bad name, but it's just, we're going to go from bad to worse. Because I feel like our country is doing so bad now. AOC really tells you what she's going to do rather than come on the words. She's just more broad. That part is true, isn't it? That part is true. AOC is much more direct with the policy she supports, whereas Kamala is much more vague, right? It's the classic... It's the classic thing I made fun of in 2016. Remember Tom Perez? The guy running the deal. We're against bad things and we're in favor of good things. If you're going to uh, run for president, start now. You have the president, you're vice president now. You can start now. Tell us what you're going to do. How do you feel about the war in Gaza? How do you feel that the U.S. and what how they've handled it? And did that affect your vote at all? In a big way. Yes. We just don't, wow. don't want any war and we don't want innocent lives to be killed without any reason. What's annoying about that, though, is that Trump is promising to make it worse. Trump is promising to be more hawkish. Trump is telling Israel to attack Iran Iran's nuclear facilities. It's not really an open question. Trump is to the right of the Democrats on that issue. Very proudly so. Very aggressively so. So, I don't know. It's just weird to me. Like, I get the idea of punishing the Democrats for being so bad on this issue and facilitating a genocide. But Trump is like genocide plus. I want genocide plus stealing the West Bank as well. And so it's like, if you were going to want to punish the Democrats, could have voted for Jill Stein, could have voted for Cornell West, could have stayed home, could have left the top, the presidential ticket blank. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, it's like I'm not as sympathetic on that point. It's like if you feel that way about the war in Gaza, you can't vote for Trump. He's saying I'm going to be worse.
We see what's going on there and we need to fix it. It needs to stop. And I think Donald Trump will be able to, to, to maneuver it. I hope he does. New York have so many issues here with high rent and working all the time. Like it's like you care about it, but you have so many other uh, major important things going on in your life that just comes before that. And it's just sad to say. Do you think that Trump is anti-war? I'm not sure. I don't think President Trump wants to make war with anyone. If Trump was in office during that time, we wouldn't. A lot of things that are going on with the migrants, the war, I just don't believe a lot of these things would be going on. If Trump had been president, I really don't think it would have gotten this far. Would you vote for AOC for president as a Democrat? The, the, oh, it wouldn't have gone as far if Trump was in there. Again, he's the branding master. That's something he's been saying now since October 7th and since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. He says so many times, wouldn't happen if I was there, wouldn't happen if I was there, wouldn't happen if I was there, wouldn't happen, wouldn't happen, wouldn't happen, wouldn't happen. And people just, if you repeat something enough, people are just like, yeah, it might, I don't think it would have happened. Ah, it's frustrating, but this is what he does. He brands himself. And, you know, I think college educated people might look at that and be like, this is ridiculous. But... A lot of people can look at it and be like, maybe it wouldn't have happened. If Trump had been president, I really don't think it would have gotten this far. Would you vote for AOC for president as a Democrat? Yeah, yeah, I would I would give it a chance. I mean, I don't I don't say that women are not equal to men, but I think she uh, might need to work on her. Uh, I don't I wouldn't say women are not equal to men, but oh boy. Education of world news, like her way to communicate about it and the policies and everything, she will she will be good maybe. If Trump were to use um, like the military, let's say if he were used to use the army to to start deporting people uh, from cities, is that something that you would support? I would definitely support that because I think that would be the only way to, to get the deportation uh, process started. We're talking about criminals. We're talking about mobs. You know, a lot of gay- No, but he's not just talking about criminals. They might start with criminals, but he's literally talking about deporting legal immigrants. Stephen Miller wants to do a denaturalization process to take legal immigrants and make them illegal and then kick them out. They talked about the Haitian migrants who are legal. Oh, my God. And by the way, this is median voter syndrome to the max, right? This is median voter syndrome. Um, I want a higher minimum wage. I want universal health care. And I also want martial law. <laughs> like, OK, what am I supposed to do with that? Who else would be able to do that but the military? I think it's a really a case by case basis. I feel like a lot of them just come here and get away with things. I don't think the police is doing what they should right now. You know, Crystal made a good point that a lot of these people, I think, are in the Bronx. Bronx or Queens. But where they are, there's a, a big... Um, like undocumented immigrant facility. And so there's like resentment building between uh, the Americans who surround it and them. And it's like that sort of painting their politics. In other words, the trick of like DeSantis and Abbott of sending undocumented immigrants to blue states um, that seemingly had the effect they wanted it to have. It made even uh, people in blue states much more anti-immigrant. According to Trump, we will no longer have any more presidents after him. <laughs> does that worry you? No. Whoa. Okay, does that not worry you because you don't think it's going to happen? Or does that not worry you because if he were to stay in, you'd be fine with it? I don't know. You tell me. I, I don't know how to read that. Not at all. We need to get rid of, like, Congress, the legislation, the laws. Like, everything just needs to be rewired and, re, you know, re rethought out. Oh, that is literally, okay, look, we're getting somewhere, right? It's when Democrats are like, we need to save democracy. A lot of voters are like, what the fuck has democracy done for me lately? What has it done for me? I can't pay the bills. I have shitty health care. I'm working two jobs. My back hurts. Like, people are furious. People are angry. And, you know, we look at that and we go, oh, my God. Like, you think you're okay with alternatives to democracy, but if you get one, you'll be like, oh, no, give me the democracy back. But people don't know that, right? They don't know that. They don't know that. It's that old thing. What, what was the saying? Like, in uh, fascist Italy under Mussolini, they were like, at least the trains ran on time. A lot of people had that view. Of, like, it was more efficient, right? And there is, a, there is this thing with authoritarian governments where if you get rid of the checks and balances and you get rid of the bureaucracy, decisions can be made faster and they can be implemented quicker. And people feel like, hey, things are getting done. In fact, there was a poll about Trump's transition and it was like over 60% of the country said, I approve of the transition. And it's like, do they know that he's picking these neocon war hawks? Do they know that he's picking anti-vaccine RFK Jr.? Do they know all the problems with all the people he's picking and the billionaires and how corrupt they are? People don't know, but they just see stuff happening and they're like, hey, stuff is happening. Maybe it'll help, right? And so it's very 
base level analysis, but it's something real that people have to contend with. They, like, you have to win in the vibesocracy. On top of having the right policies, on top of helping people, which is the core of this, because that's what politics should be about. It's also, how do you win the vibesocracy? And Democrats are just so far behind in the vibesocracy. It's ridiculous. So Trump AOC voters, I don't know, to the extent there's real answers there, there's a thing about, like, anti-war. They think AOC and Trump are anti-war. Okay. Um, Trump is definitely not anti-war, but I digress. Uh, and they think fighters. They think outsiders. Right? So, again, I know I'm a broken record, but it's hard to take away anything else other than to say Bernie was right. You know, Trump gives people a narrative. Trump gives people a story. Trump gives people enemies to hate and despise and blame, scapegoat for their problems. And Democrats don't. Democrats have their checklist that they hand people. Here are the things I'm in favor of. Um, Bernie had that same narrative-driven politics. It wasn't just the right policies. It was the right policies mixed with a narrative of who's at fault, who's to blame. And in Bernie's case, he happens to be correct about who's to blame, the big money donors who've corrupted our system. And so there you have it. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do because I'm trying to be kind and take the real pieces of information out of here. But there's also the other part of my mind, which wants to tell these people, you literally don't know what you just voted for when it comes to Trump. You have no idea. And you're going to regret it very quickly. I guarantee you. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.